Hey guys, how you going? Volacy here. We're going to take a look at the first game of Intel Com 2019, the ITS event where I was running the Shaz Vasti Sectorial. Five rounds in Wellington uh, with about 18, 19 players overall. Coming into game one, it's going to be a frontline mission and the opponent is Morats. And after we started deploying, I realized that this guy was running none other than the Kornak squad. So Kornak plus the Soyats plus the Rack to Rack. And as you guys know, if you've been watching my YouTube channel over the last year or two, I play that list a lot. So it was a list I was very familiar with. It's a pretty scary one. I was you know, a little bit worried about you know what it was capable of, but again, I do understand it very well. So at least I can try and play around it. Now, um, looking at the table, this is the mission where it is, well, this is the table set up where it's, you know, pretty dense from ground level. If you just go and, and peak eye level down there, um, you won't really be able to see the enemy deployment zone. You won't be able to see much of anything, really. But if you deploy on the buildings, then you can see, um, you know, everything on on the on. The, on um, <laughs> on, on the, their building tops as well is what I'm trying to, to get my mouth around there. So with that in mind, I did opt to go with my secondary list, uh, Shazvasti Intel Beta. And um, I'm not too sure if you guys have all watched the intro video that I did, but I'll just quickly whip it, ag whip it up again. Intel Beta is Shishkin in the five-man Nox link with the Tencho, all the cheerleaders plus the Q drone, the Caliban Spitfire, uh, we've got the Shrouded Fort Observer, Doctor, Mentor, Lieutenant, and the three Tiger uh, support troopers, right? So with that in mind, i um, going to try and outflank my opponent, get up in his grill with, um, you know, the little creatures. Bearing in mind that I don't know what his list is as I'm choosing my list. I have to do that fairly blindly. Hoping to get second turn because Frontline's a mission where you've got to end the game with more stuff in the critical zones. So if I just grab a, a color here. So you've got deployment zone way back here, deployment zone back here-ish, and then there's uh, these three zones. And if you get the one in the middle, that's something like three points or so. And if you have your Xenotech in there as well, you get a bonus point. And if you can really control their um, you know, area closest to their zone, you get way more points than that. But that's a harder one to control. Anyway, the player going second has a big advantage because they have the last turn and they can just simply move their troops into the position they need to be, kill whoever's there very easily. And uh, annoyingly enough, you can actually change your classified card to add the points value printed on it to the zone. So that makes it even worse because that card's randomized. So good job, Corvuspelli. You've made a pretty terrible mission in my view. That said, we have to do our best. So rolling the dice, my opponent wins a lieutenant dice roll, opts to go immediately for second turn, which tells me, oh gosh, this guy knows what he's doing. My opponent was, uh, I believe, Matt Bissell, um, no, Matt Hassel, I get the two names mixed up. There's two guys with similar last names, who I played a fair bit in War Machine of Hordes days, but my first time encountering him in, um, in, in this. So I force him to deploy first. I'm picking the table side I want. And then we realize he's playing Kornak. So here it comes. We've got, uh, I don't know if I've been through his list yet. Um, where did I put it? So he's running Kornak with the Soyat Combi Rifle Deflector, I believe. This is from memory. Rack-to-Rack -rack Vulcan Shotgun, uh, Tactical Awareness HMG, Heavy Rocket Launcher. These days, I just go all out Tactical Awareness just because I want that, you know, that threat range, that Alpha Strike. Q Drone and Hacker, pretty good combo. Zerat Killer Hacker, the new, fresh new, uh, shiny new Zerat. That tries to for smoke, quite useful for blocking off lanes where you feel like you might get hit by an invisible uh, missile launcher. The med tech and slave drone, so really solid list. Like I can't really fault that list much at all, except for the lack of tactical awareness, of course. So uh, there's the heavy rocket launcher, rack to rack. We got um, you know Kornak in there at the back, uh, multi rifle um, rocket. Oh, that's the um, HMG. Sorry. Um, this thing I think represents the Xenotech, and he's got his uh, Doctor Worm. Wish he'd painted more of his guys. Okay, so he's deploying first, um, mostly in buildings. Around the bottom right of the flank, and this is the point of interest for me, the Q drone's here, backed up by the hacker, and there's a um, helper bot for Dr. Worm who's situated over here so he can revive the Q drone. Now my game plan here, going first, is to see if I can beat the Q drone initially with, with Shishkin. She is in a five-man link, she's got the doctor to back her up, shouldn't be too hard. Then I can move a Caliban around here and uh, knock out the hacker, knock out the doctor. And if I can do that in one turn, I will have reduced his army by three orders. So Kornak will struggle a little bit to get over to Shishkin and, and clobber her in the head. 
and I'd have a, um, a Calib Caliban, hopefully with bonus wounds, in his um, deployment zone. And if I can continue putting pressure on him, I might be able to box Kornak in where he can't spread his remaining like three or four people he's left with at the end of the game across all three zones. So that's, that's the game plan there. Okay, so my deployment, um, this is the right-hand side for me. We've got, let me just close this down a little bit. So uh, Tiger Creature, representing my little alien xenomorphs. There's another one over here. Um, R drone as well. Um, Icadron, there's the Q drone on this side. My plan is uh, to see if I can uh, block him off with repeater networks. I've only got a normal Shazvasti hacker rather than an assault hacker or anything. But um, if Kornak's going to come through here in his turn uh, towards Shishkin, who's going to be on, on in this area of the table, he's going to go through that, the repeater networks. That'll hopefully slow him down. Yes, it's annoying he's got a zero at killer hacker, which is going to be able to go over there and um, you know eliminate my hacker. But um, I'll see if I can kill it before he gets it to play a turn with it. Looking down through the middle, so there's the tiger creature, so that's the repeater network from the, um, the Echadron, uh, Q-Drone back here. Uh, the link team situated in this building, so we've got Shishkin outside, we've got um, Hacker, Tenjo Expert, um, Nox Trooper with a multi-sniper, there's another Nox Trooper uh, I think inside the building, Dr. Worm is, is over there. You've got the HVT on the side with the Xenotech attached to the Doctor who is here as we discussed. So getting ready to do what I said, which is to go around this flank here after the Q-Drone, who is up there, and uh, also a Shrouded in the middle of the table. Basically going to be staying there for the whole game, putting down mines and adding its points value to the um, to the central uh, crucial zone. Okay, and this is the um, a closer look. So we've got the, the Mentor there, Echadron through here. So yeah, as you can see, unless he comes up and kills my hacker, um, Kornak's just going to be hacked every step of the way. Even though he's got a deflector, even though his guys are high BTS, if he's just moving and not resetting, eventually I'm going to start um, uh, immobilizing people, right? All right, there we are. So there's another Nox Trooper in the corner. That's where it actually was. Um, Shishkin is the lieutenant. And the link leader, uh, sorry, Shishkin's not the lieutenant, it's the uh, mentor in the room. Sorry, my bad. Um, his reserve trooper is the Zerat, and I feel like this is a bad placement for it. So he's just behind the building on the flank here. You've got a tiger creature that's going to come up. Morat, um, there are no arrows sticking out except for the Q-Drone on this other side of the table. So as you can see, that, that tiger creature is going to be able to come around the corner, hit that uh, Zerat in the face, and with Berserk and double action, going to waste her. I probably should have mentioned in my previous video uh, discussing my list overall that I've spent the extra point on each tiger creature because there is a mission where looting and sapper dodging where they'll count as having double action um, close combat weapons which will allow them to attack the um, objective with berserk and potentially bash it. So that was a, yet another reason why I went for Morat's, uh, sorry, uh, Shazvasti over OSS is because there's the extra tools for getting in there and killing that objective. If looting and sabotaging wasn't in the lineup, I might be saving the extra three points by downgrading them all to uh, regular um, AP uh, weapons or whatever they have, but for this time around, it's double action, right? Okay, so there's the um, overview of the table. Let's just take a look at this one more time. So uh, Shazvasti deployed over here, Morat's deployed over here. You got the three tiger creatures here. You've got a whole bunch of repeaters here, here, and here. Uh, link team over here, link team over here. So for Kornak to get to me, he's going to come all the way over here, and that's after I take a first turn of, of nailing him. I've deployed a reserve trooper, Caliban with Spitfire there. It's just going to walk up through here. One, one play that I can make is I can walk right over there and shoot the Q-Drone point blank, which will be surprise attack, mimetism, sorry, surprise attack camo, and short range for the Q-Drone. It's just that he's still going to crit me on like a, a two. So uh, Shishkin's going to go for it first, moving out here blasting him and if the Q drone does crit her she's got a couple of wounds and if she does die the doctor's right there so chances of me eliminating this thing very very high and he's got he's got a Datratsi on this side um, doesn't have quite line of sight through to this side of the table so it's going to be a matter of me coming around here and and whacking him um, from that angle okay first order of the game um, Shishkin has a go at it um, shoots the Q drone Q drone does get a crit I believe wounds a Shishkin then she makes another attack at it and uh, and wipes him out uh, then we have, uh, sorry, we remember that we should have done Impetuous at this stage, so not that that would have affected the interaction between the Q-Drone and Shishkin, because 
Um, the Tiger creatures don't move in range, but they all roll up the battlefield. They've got uh, irregular orders. So Shishkin, wounded as you can see here by the Q drone, but is able to have another crack at it. This blue silhouette marker is just showing where she moves out to, moves back. She's got nano screen, she retains cover. It's just a matter of getting that right angle. If she came over far enough, it allows her to ignore the, um, the cover of the Q drone uh, because she gets the right angle past the, the, the cover um, barrier, but does manage to wreck it. Then we move in with the, the Caliban. So this guy's just rolled up the left-hand flank. I'm using a Nocta for Spitfire to represent him. And unfortunately, my, my opponent here has put the, um, the Mora hacker around the wrong way and fails his change facing attempt when the Caliban comes through. So Caliban able to blast him, then go into close combat and eat up a wound, and then move around where it can get line of sight, um, just as we described earlier, past these boxes into hit the 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 med tech the doctor worm and doctor worm just stands no chance against the spitfire mimetism guy um uh, camouflage guy so dies as well note the model over here that's actually an hvt i believe so um not going to be aroing me and uh then what we do is we move with the caliban all the way back around to here and he's collected an additional wound because if I leave him around here, Kornak can just come out of the building and blast him. So I want the Caliban on this side. Yes, it is true that Kornak could move all the way from the middle of the table through to this corner. But by the time he's done that, and by the time he's stripped two wounds off the Caliban, the turn will be pretty much over. And he won't be able to do much else with it. Then I can move him in with Shishkin and just finish him off. So feeling really good about the position there. So Kornak lost three orders, so Q-Drone, um, Morat Hacker, and Dr. Worm, down to seven orders left. Uh, sorry, lost the Zerat as well, uh, as you can see here with the uh, Tiger moving in and crunching him. So uh, other other Tigers moving into rooms and stuff. Um, Shrouded laying a mine, then going back into camo in the middle of the table. And um, Shishkin just improving her position so that she's hiding and everything. Um, so that means that it's six orders for Morats plus one um, tactical awareness order. Impetuous Datchrats are coming over here. He's going to go towards the uh, the guy here, but it's chain rifle versus uh, chain cult, really. Pretty even fight. Uh, so he comes around here, decides to go for it anyway, and it's Datchrats versus chain cult. Um, both of them get hit and uh, go unconscious, as far as I recall. So uh, that's that. Then you've got Korak, Kornak and Squad moving out. They're trying to reposition. Um, he's gone around here uh, to try and recover the um, the Xenotech because he does need to place the multi-scanner at some point. So goes around and successfully does that. Brings him back into the room. Kornak has actually left the squad. So Kornak's in the corner where he's um, holding on to the Xenotech. Everybody else has moved out. So this is a four-man link team only, which is going to make them a little bit more vulnerable when I go after them. So they're moving through to the middle of the table, setting up. Again, this is not the, really the best play you can do in Infinity because um, by moving into the center of the table you just meaning just just making it so that your opponent uh requires fewer orders to get to you we've got a tiger creature here as well another reason why this setup isn't the best is the tiger creature could just move through and chain cult and potentially get a wound on this guy which will uh, not be great lo losing a fourth member of the team that's exactly what happens in the Shaz Fasty turn. So Tiger Creature runs up. Everybody tries shooting him or dodging or whatever they're trying to do. Chain Cult goes off. Um, I believe causes a wound on somebody, but doesn't remove anyone. And then they're basically just hanging out, right? So this uh, group of three guys here, um, just hanging out, watching the table. Um, I think there's four of them, actually. And uh, yeah, my turn. So Shaz Fasty turn two. This uh, Caliban going back into um, Camo State, he's going to move over here and try and take out Kornak. Idea being that Prothion level 1 takes you up to CC 26. He is um, going to be inflicting minus 6 on Kornak. If Kornak does go for the Berserk, um, probably the Prothion is going to gain one wound and uh, like lose one or two from the Berserk. So I'm at least going to get some damage on him. And if Kornak dies, he's not going to be able to place the multi-scanner. And the Link team is going to be pretty weak. So that is the plan. The only thing wrong with this plan as the uh, Caliban comes through is that I've made a real blunder here, and this is a gross, gross overestimation, and it's, uh, it's even worse because I actually play Kornak on a regular basis, and somehow I've forgotten that Kornak has BTS-9, and Prothion uses BTS saves uh, when it does damage. So when the, when, the, um, when the guy's attacking here, Kornak's actually able to, s to actually save his hits unless he gets um, a crit. So to get a crit, I think it's... Um, 14 plus CC 26. So what's happening is that the um, the Prothyanga goes in, Kornak does some damage. He does manage to um, you know survive because he's got an additional wound, 
but then I realized the more I attack here, the more my attacks are likely to bounce off the thick-skinned BTS and do nothing, so real mistake there for me. In the meantime, moving my own Dr. Worm out with my own Xenotech and trying to place the multi-scan in the middle of the table, uh, which you know I failed a number of attempts at, so that got really awkward. Elsewhere, combined um, coordinated orders moving out with the Q drone, moving out with the Ica drones, they're all coming out of the rooms now, along with the, the R drone. And the plan is to set them up in positions where as soon as that, that Soyat squad moves, there's going to be a repeater network here, 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 and here. And um, because he's got no zero, zero at hacker, he again is going to be hacked every step of the way if he tries to move. After this, I'm going to have one more turn to go in, hopefully kill one or two of them, and uh, end the game with everybody inside the central frontline strip, right, which should um, hopefully seal the victory, despite me not having last turn. So there you go, our drone's closed in there, we've got the Echo drone closed in there, everybody's in range. Uh, this is the Mentor, so again the Mentor, spending Lieutenant's order, moving to the middle of the table, not going to be able to provide any points while in the deployment zone. Tiger Creature moving down the corridor like in the Aliens movies, but not moving too far through, just covering this door in this room. And then it uh, goes back to Morat's turn, so Kornak uh, does manage to remove the Caliban thanks to his high BTS and Berserk, and then moves out to place the multi-scanner and join the rest of his crew. So he does that successfully, hangs out by the door. And um, rather than going back into the link, for some reason decides to go into Suppression Fire. He has taken a wound. So, yeah, I think I prefer Kornak in the link. Suppression Fire is an easy one to beat most of the time. But he's camping out. He's got guys in all of the relevant zones. So now it's just up to me to try and remove that. So Tiger Creature hanging out. Decided not to move him. I need to keep every single point that I possibly can in the central strip for the end of the game. Dr. Worm moving through, um, only with a few orders left for this guy. Placing the multi-scanner after failing so many times, but... Uh, Dr. Worm also hanging out in the central strip, along with the Mentor Lieutenant. Um, so multi-scanner placed. I've also moved the Doctor just a little bit further through, hoping that the deployment zone uh, was, was back a bit, and the central strip ends hopefully around about here, and hopefully putting the Doctor Worm in the, the enemy territory strip, just so I've straddled it a little bit, and I've got points in their strip and the central strip as well, just to make it harder for him to, to, um, to spread his points out. And then with the majority group, we're doing it. We're moving out with Shishkin. So this is Bit representing the hacker. We've got the uh, Nox Trooper here, Multi Sniper, Nox Trooper there, Tensho um, and Shishkin herself. And they're all moving out. And the plan is just to support Shishkin as she goes in for the, the kill. So as you can see here, Shishkin with a massive BS-18 and nanoscreen moving to this point. Everybody's backing her up. She's going to get line of sight through to shoot this HMG and ripping into him with a Red Fury that is extremely angry and able to tear him down. After that happens, just slicing again onto this range point where she can get to Kornak. Remember, she has taken a wound, so if my opponent does get lucky, she could die here and I just have to move in with the rest of the squad. But that doesn't happen. Shishka goes and uh, rips apart Kornak. You know, you're, you're talking BS-18 here, 5 dice, fatality level 2. It's going to happen. Then she's able to move around and continue to have a go at this rocket launcher who is going to be dropping um, prone after a while. She's can of course able to move in and you know blast them point blank with the red fury, go into close combat, revive some wounds, and then come around here. And all he's got left is a Raktorak and a Soyat when I eventually run out of orders. So just two models left. Looking at the overview, so I think the middle of the table is around about here, ish, and that means the two central strips are around about here. So in this zone, we've got, you know, Shishkin and the entire Link team and a Shrouded and a Tensho X, uh, I'm sorry, a, a, a Mentor at the back over here, Dr. Worm's here, and hopefully we've got a little bit in this zone as well, possibly Dr. Worm. So what he tries to do in desperation is move out. Um, Shishkin is in, this is just showing uh, where the uh, guys are positioned, by the way. So Shishkin in combat with the Rack to Rack, but the Soviet moves into the room. Um, it's a shootout between him and the Tensho boarding shotgun, a Nox Trooper with a Zapper, uh, this guy with just a basic combi rifle. There's even a multi-sniper just outside the door, and it's just a, like a massive shootout, bullets ricocheting everywhere. The Soyet does die. Game ends, and unfortunately for Morats, Shazvasti have got all the zones. So there's only one model left, that's a Rack to Rack. Um, you know, not as many points as you'd like, so uh, Shishkin there, the whole team's there. And it's a massive 10-0 win. The only point my opponent got here was the multi-scanner. 
So yeah, um, I feel like uh, he's made the right choice going second. That's normally the right choice, but you've really got to be very conservative if you're going to do that. And I think that he needed to have been a bit more aggressive with Kornak. But unfortunately, losing the Xerac killer hacker couldn't take out my hacker. I had the, the repeater screen there. Um, only thing that really would have won it for him, I think, is maybe going first. Um, killing my hacker with his Zerat, and then just barging in with, with his link team and just going straight for the throat, trying to get in there with a boarding shotgun, knock out Shishkin when it's uh, the, the more active turn. But again, it would have been hard. I think this was a, a fairly poor matchup for him and um, a tough scenario as well. Uh, but it's good to get a win under my belt. I'll have another game tomorrow, um, second round, and we're going to be playing Capture and Protect with Shishkin again. Which list will we choose? Who will be up against... Tune in soon to find out.